Hi everybody, this is your Mycophile Sage. I was gonna say your favorite, but I don't know if I'm your favorite, so... <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I'm a Mycophile, and my name is Sage. Well, today, uh, in this video, uh, as you can see with the title, it's called Why Microspore... Um, sorry, multi <laughs> Multispore is King. Alright? And I'm talking in regards not to get uh, uh, a consistent, uh, you know, um, level of harvest, consistent uh, phenotypes. You know, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about in the process of choosing uh, your, you know, the genetics that you like, right? So the process of getting to that point. That's where I say multi-sport is absolutely king. What, uh, compared to what? Well, compared to... All right, trying to make isolates and stuff. You know, people getting all hung up on making isolates and uh, having a monoculture and all this stuff. And, and so, 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 how do they do it? Okay, well, they say, okay, well, I, this bit is rhizo here, so I want to get that bit because I like rhizo. But here's the thing, though, nothing correlates with a rhizomorphic mycelium with anything other than okay, maybe it's a little aggressive right now. But then you could put it to another medium and then it'll become tomentose. See, every single mycelium, all, all mycelium, can switch from rhizomorphic and tomentose, right? Tomentose is this fluffy stuff. Now, on grain, usually, in my experience, uh, once you put it to a grain, then it is tomentose, right? Because it is uh, nutritiously, uh, it's a very nutritious, uh, <laughs> nutritious, <laughs> nutritious substrate, right? Grain, it's, it's full of energy, it's basically just pure energy, right? So it, 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 there's no reason for the mycelium to become rhizo because uh, they don't need to be aggressive about finding more uh, nutrition. Like, look at how tomentose that is. That's some, that's some fluffy stuff, guys. All mycelium. So right now it's uh, tomentose, okay? And you don't believe me that uh, mycelium can switch easily from one to the other depending on the growing medium? Well, now look at the grains and all the mycelium, all right? Uh, it's especially uh, noticeable when it's just colonizing. But this this uh, this grain jar that I use was completely tomentose. There's no rhizo. But as soon as I put it to core, then every single grain piece here, every single one, all of a sudden, magically, they become rhizomorphic. Oh my god, right? They all become rhizo because why? Core has no nutrition, guys. It's got no nutritious, it's a non-nutritious medium. That's why it's hard to contend with core, okay? So uh, because there's no nutrition, all of a sudden, every single grain, grain, right, with the mycelium on it that I dispersed in here and mixed it up, you know, they're all separate entities now. They're like, oh crap, we need to find some uh, nutrition if we want to survive. So, but but they're, because it's core, there's no nutrition. So what do they do? They quickly, rapidly colonize. They spread all their, you know, tentacles out to find some food, but they can't find it, but they do find their friends, right? So that's how they colonize. They all link up with each other, and now what was hundreds of th and thousands of disparate little grain pieces with each is each little mycelium island, imagine that, right? Are how, how all of a sudden had to meet up, and they're like, oh my god, we have to find nutrition? Okay, well, we can't find it, we found our friends. All right, let's become one entity and pool our resources. And that's what a bulk sub is, essentially, all right? So as you can see, uh, it's not as clear now, but you can see, um, like that, right there. See that? That's rhizo, right? You can see all the little tentacles coming out. This wasn't apparent in the grain jar, right? But as soon as you put it to core, all of a sudden, they put all of these tentacles out, all these rhizomorphic strands, because they become desperate. So uh, basically, sorry guys, I really uh, <laughs> went off track here, but uh, what, what I essentially want to say is um, don't worry about rhizomorphic mycelium. Don't worry about tomentos, right? They, they, because they're indicators of not much. All it indicates is that, okay, maybe this is a fast-growing mycelium, right? But it doesn't mean inherently better because it might colonize fast, but it might not fruit. It might not have that fruiting gene of, uh, you know, some, some genetics just don't even fruit, right? And some genetics are complete bunk, you know? So, is, so looking at just straight mycelium, like in an agar culture, you cannot ascertain that information, 
right? So nowadays people are going all crazy, lol scientist, you know, oh, I'm going to take this strand because it's, uh, this is what's going to happen. Well, no, it just looks cool. That's it. That's it. But it doesn't tell you anything. And I care about the end result. The process is important too, but there's a smart way of doing it and there's a not so smart way of doing it. So that's why I'm, I'm saying that uh, basically uh, using a multi, um, if you want to get genetics, using a multi-spore is king because, and I'm not just talking about syringes. Let's say maybe you put, you put some spores uh, on agar and then you got a bunch of genetics and then you put that to grain or whatever, you know, there's different ways of doing it, but that's ultimately the point I want to make is that uh, instead of just, you know, I mean, th this is so abstract compared to what's actually going to happen, right? So why wouldn't you just start from this fruit, fruit, all sorts of genetics, right? All sorts of mushrooms. And then you can choose. You can literally choose. There's no guesswork involved. That's nice genetics. This is good genetics. This one's not nice genetics, whatever, you know, and then you can choose what you want. Why wouldn't you just do that? So, uh, yeah, because essentially, let's say you've got a cluster here, you take that cluster, clone the inside, right? And uh, you put it to agar. Once you do that, then uh, what you want to do is grow that out, right? But while you're waiting to grow that out, cook up that original clone fruit in whatever way you like to cook your fungi and do a little taste test because at the end of the day, no matter how cool that fungi may look, if it doesn't taste good, then it's not worth continuing, right? Yeah, so do that, you know, and then and then once that clone grows out, then put it back to the grain, fruit it out, okay? Maybe you'll find another cluster you like. All right, take that and just keep doing that maybe for five, five, six generations, okay? And then at that point, you want to take a spore print, okay? And that spore print, you're going to be back to where you were first, although now you're closer to where you'd like to be. Because, because every time you take a spore print, sorry guys, it sounds confuddled, but... Every time you take a spore print, you are actually getting rid of certain genetics, right? It's full of genetics, so it's going to take a while, but every single time you're getting rid of certain genetics. It's going to take a while, but that's that's how it works. So every time you clone, you're actually getting rid of certain genetic features out of the gene pool of this genetic, this genetic family, whatever, that you're making, right? This strain, let's say. And you're doing the same with a spore print too. So if you do that long enough, then eventually you are going to get uh, pretty consistent results, even from spores. Um, and that, that's basically how strains are made. Um, so I don't, uh, it sounds a bit all over the place, but all I want to say, the main point is, A, don't worry about rhizomorphic mycelium or if it's tomentose or whatever. It don't matter, guys. It doesn't matter. And the end result is what is most important, right? At least it is for me. Okay, that that that's why this exists this method this doesn't exist for that that exists for this you know what i mean uh so and the second point is uh because of that it is just simpler and it just makes more sense to start with multi-spore root it out find the best ones you like okay make clones and then and then start your isolations from there right so you know you're not dealing with junk bunk genetics um, so yeah, that's uh, pretty much all I wanted to say. I must have repeated myself quite a few times, but see you guys in the next video. Have a good one. Hi everybody. So uh, I was just editing, editing the video and uh, I uh, just wanted to basically summarize uh, because I sound uh, uh, like very, very passionate and it's because I am. And the reason for that is uh, because I feel like essentially um, people nowadays, uh, at least those new to the hobby which there is many you know there's many now that are very new to the hobby don't appreciate multi-spore right now of course multi-spore let's say syringe has many risks uh or it could have many risks right if if the syringe is not made properly so basically like guys in summation right uh the reason i'm talking about multi-spore syringes so much is because a lot of beginners that's it you know they're they don't know agar they don't even maybe want to invest in agar they just want to get a few grows you know and in the in the past right in this hobby people experienced growers would say go pf tech right go pf cakes and um but nowadays it feels like everybody's just like go straight to agar you know build the sab do all this 
buy some plates, learn some processes. But the thing is, I think that's a that's quite a big ask for a beginner who doesn't know anything about this hobby coming in. It's quite a lot of information to take in. And I think that'll just be turning away a lot of people from this hobby because it looks like, you know, very, very quote unquote scientific. But the thing is, uh, I'm just trying to get back to basics with this is that if you're a beginner and all you got is a syringe, go PF cakes, you know, that's it. Because you go on Reddit and stuff and there's this whole fetishization, I feel, happening of this hobby of agar especially, you know, like pretty plates and all that. And all I want to say in this video is that it doesn't, pretty plates don't tell you anything about the reality, right? People want to go ahead, keep isolating little bits and pieces and say, oh, I'm going to take this little sector here because blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, it doesn't correlate really to the end result because you're not looking at it. It's very abstract going from a plate to an actual fruiting situation. Right, the plates. I think we've lost the plot in thinking that uh, agar exists for the end result of the of the fungi itself, rather than the fungi existing for the end result of agar fetishization, basically. And that's what I wanted to get to this video is just remind people, hey, hey, guys, let's not lose the plot here, right? Their beginners are still beginners just as they were. There's a lot of resources out there. If they want to go the agar route, there's plenty for it and go for it because agar is awesome. But the thing is, if you're just a beginner and you just want to get a little bit of success, you don't need to invest too much in this hobby to get started. All you need is some PF cakes. That's what I would recommend. Or uh, lesser but also possible is to go the Broke Boy Tech. The thing about PF cake though is I, I would recommend once they're fully colonized, okay, take three or four PF cakes, right? Half pint PF cakes as usual and uh, grind it up with a cheese grater or just crumble it with your hands and spawn it to core. You got a bulk grow, congratulations. You don't need a stupid shotgun fruiting chamber. You just need a shoebox and some core. That's it. And some PF cakes and a syringe. That's all you need. And the beautiful thing about syringes, you don't need to use a sab, really. You could do open air inoculations. You just, just got to be careful, okay? And it is a little riskier, but that's how I did it. That's how a lot of people did it. So that's all I wanted to say, guys. Thanks for watching, guys. Michael File Sage, checking out.